world. We are now, we have only the recommendation. So we are, so the yeah. The draft recommendation contained in document CG 226 is adopted. We are now at the next item, building the European Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roman Inclusions. Sie wissen, dass wir uns hier im Kongress sehr intensiv und oft mit der Frage der Roma auf lokaler und regionaler Ebene beschäftigt haben. Wir wissen, wie schwierig die Situation ist. Das ist eine sehr komplizierte Situation in verschiedenen Mitgliedstaaten. Wir wissen, wie schwierig die Position der Roma ist auf lokaler und regionaler Ebene. Es ist wichtig, dass we create a European alliance. We've had many debates on this, and I'd like to debate, uh, to open the debate. I welcome Mr. Ken Deve from the Open Society Foundations. Notably financial support to this work. Welcome. I'm also pleased to welcome Mrs. Dusica Davidovic, member of the City Council of Nish in Serbia, who participates in the core group for the launch of Alliance and who will share with her city's action for home inclusion and her vision of the future role of this Alliance. Finally, I will come our colleague and thematic rapporteur, John Warmischheim. I first give the floor to Mr. Kenneth Davy. Please, you have the floor. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, when I'm described as a representative of the Open Society Foundations, I'm actually a member of the board of a thing called MTM. Uh, which means making the most. Uh, and it's short for making the most of European Union structural funds because it is um, an Open Society Foundations program um, which is funded by George Soros, uh, managed from the Open Society Foundations in uh, Budapest. And its purpose is to help Roma communities uh, benefit from European Union structural funds. It does this through uh, national partners, which are voluntary organizations or consulting companies, varying with the country, which are contracted by the Open Society Foundation to help municipalities prepare eligible applications to the managing authorities in the individual countries uh, responsible for the European Union structural funds. And these are funds like the um, uh, European Social Fund, uh, the European Regional Development Fund, um, and so on. Um, the program funded by Mr. Soros, also provides uh, the municipalities um, with additional finance to cover those costs of attracting the European Union funds, but which are not eligible for reimbursement uh, by the European Union. And it also helps with bridging finance because uh, the condition of most of the structural funds is that you have to incur the expense and carry out the project before you can get reimbursement from the European Union. <clears throat> the Making the Most program also provides staff training for municipal staff who are responsible for preparing applications um, and it provides them some mentoring uh, not only during the project preparation, but also during the project execution. The Making the Most program also 
undertakes a considerable amount of advocacy, um, both at Brussels and also uh, at national headquarters. Um, advocacy on the content of European Union structural fund programs, what sort of things are eligible for funding, and secondly, and perhaps more importantly, on the procedures, because it's very often the procedures which make it most difficult uh, for the municipalities concerned to actually access the funds. Uh, the Making the Most program is fully operational now. It's been going for a couple of years, three years actually. It's fully operation in four new member states. That's Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia. Uh, it's generated over 300 European Union funded projects worth a total so far of 27 million euros. And it covers uh, projects uh, for education, uh, for employment, for health care, for infrastructure, small-scale local infrastructure, and now, most recently, it's been extended to housing. The program is also in the process of extension to the Western Balkans, to candidate countries, um, because uh, there is some pre-accession funding, IPA funding, available to some of the candidate countries in the Western Balkans, and uh, it is, uh, we now have national partners active in Albania, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Serbia. Uh, why uh, is this information being given to you uh, in the context of this debate? It's because there is much parallel to the work, uh, or the proposed work, of the Alliance. And indeed, uh, we have found it uh, advisable to try and build up a, a similar network um, of municipalities which have been active uh, in the pursuit of and use of European structural funds. Um, as I say, the main work is done through the consulting work of the national partners, but um, now as uh, an addition to that, um, we are in the process of setting up a network of, in each country, of municipalities who have been active in the use of these funds and who are active generally in the promotion of Roma integration. The new program, um, which is designed to use municipal experience to extend the aspiration, the ambition to get European structural funds and also to spread good practice. It's initially aimed at the four states where the program is well established. That's Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia. And the first effort, which is just underway now, is to collect examples of good practice from municipalities in those four countries. And um, the aim is to have these collected for presentation at a European Union awards pro ceremony which will be held in Budapest uh, in October and where the awards will be made by Commissioner Andor um, of the European Union uh, who is in a sense uh, very much the patron of this initiative. The hope is that this process of identifying and collecting good practice will lead to the formation of national chapters um, of mayors, municipalities active in Roma integration. And these chapters will provide training, exchange of experience, peer review, and uh, practical assistance to members, individual members uh, seeking external funding for Roma integration programs. 
This obviously is very parallel to the ambitions uh, for the alliance um, and I'm pretty certain that an appropriate time when we've got these national chapters underway and when you have begun to get the alliance underway uh, that there will be scope for discussion to see how the national chapters um, and their members in the individual countries uh, could uh, fit in or contribute to the alliance. Um, I don't think we have reached the stage yet where we have very much to offer on that because this is program has only just been adopted and as I say, it, the immediate ambition is to get this uh, participants identified for the award ceremony in October. But uh, it obviously has potential for contribution to the uh, ambitions of the Alliance um, and we look forward to the stage where um, our ch chairman, Carmen Miget, and the project managers uh, would be in a dis um, <coughs> position to discuss these things um, with uh, the uh, Congress. Already there is considerable collaboration with, between our program and the Council of Europe um, and it has particularly surrounded the program for training Roma mediators which is something to which MTM and its staff um, have been contributing resources um, in the Eastern European countries, Central and Eastern European countries um, and indeed uh, we also provided uh, suggestions um, at a recent meeting here um, on how the Roma Mediator Program could be improved and I believe those suggestions were adopted and are in process. So already there are certainly links uh, between the MTM Program and uh, the Council. Um, our program, of course, is aimed particularly at the European Union funds. It has, um, in a sense, a more uh, narrow and focused um, target. But um, at any rate, we look forward to the continuation of this and widening of this cooperation, and particularly in respect of the objectives of the Alliance. Mr. Davy, thank you very much indeed for your contribution. And I would like to thank the MTM board and would ask you to um, convey uh, our best wishes to um, Shea, who has played a very active role indeed. I would now like to give the floor to Mrs. Davidovich, who is from the city of Nish. The city of Nish has made an important contribution in the past to the integration of Roma. I give you the floor, Mrs. Davidovich, but I would ask you to be relatively brief because we are going to have to work through our agenda in the allotted time. Mrs. Davidovich. Thank you, Chairman. Dear colleagues, from June 2008 to June, to, to June 2009, Serbia presided to Roma Decade, the joint initiative of the Southeast and Central Europe, Europe countries, which has lasted from 2005 and has been aimed to improve Roma position. Their education status, living conditions, to include them in the labor market, to improve their health and thus help extend the years of good health. Low level of education of Roma is playing central role in the explanation of their bad position. It is noticeable that lack of knowledge contributes to negative influence of Roma population health on insufficient consequences about preventive health protection as well as about available health protection services. Combination of hybrid rate and short 
short life span implies that Roma population, population is younger compares to the rest of population and in speed the insufficient statistical data of Roma population health it is clear that the rate of mortality of newborn Roma children and children in general is higher compared to the rest of population. Also the mortality rate of Roma population remains high through the whole their life often due to the infections of the respiratory and digestive organs as well as skin disease that are particularly frequent. The observation of National Employment Service is that Roma are not very interested to educative training because of their material situation, although all the programs are free or courage. From individual discussion with them, we learn much about their life. They mostly live in unsanitary condition, have great number of uh, greater number of children deal with collecting secondary raw materials and street cells. A small number of them complete high school and only three registered Roma have university degree. In recent years, health care centre niche has been, has been involved in two Ministry of Health projects related to Roma population health protection, improvement of Roma health and for better Roma life quality. In recent years, 25% of, of the total number of decedent uh, children preschool and school age were Roma children. Very often situation is that parents refer to the health care center mostly only when their children are sick, which means that the number of children is not included in private and systematic and control health examination of the certain age. Local safe government has a general commitment to promote and encourage social inclusion of Roma and the activities undertaken so far has been based on the project approach in the fields recognized as a priorities after joint analysis with Roma population representatives. For some of these projects, local safe government allocated full means and for other projects, local safe government just participate in financing by allocating a part of budget means. Up to now, the comp comprehensive local program of Roma inclusion has not been developed yet. The measures to active employment police, uh, politics include also Roma employment. Engagement in public works represents one of the measures where within each project requiring unqualified workers, 25% of Roma is included. The greatest number of employment Roma is present in public until it com campaigns. Among other measures, there are also <clears throat> program for Roma education and literacy for uh, acquiring so-called uh, functional education as well as various training. Means results of such projects are develop database about Roma people and their needs on the territory of city municipality Treveni Kirst, where Roma people's settlements are, lo are located as a basic for future project planning, improved access to information and different education resources for Roma children in Mahala, settlement internet created, preconditions from legalization of whole Roma settlements, improved level of understanding and sensibility of local public for Roma people, employment problems and increased number of employed improved understanding of rights and manner to access of to rights. They were based on the overall analysis for, uh, of all relevant uh, circumstances. Marginalization of Roma citizens is complex and multilateral and it manifests in true, for example, high, high employment rate and non-realization of civil rights. Low level of education among Roma people has a central role in explanation of their bad position. Like this, general equality of Roma women compared to Roma men greatly came from an equal level for education. Statistical research and production of poll with data about Roma people on the territory of municipality of Srveni Kirsti Niš within the CAD of Roma people released in cooperation with OSC means in the uh, 
in the amount of 10% of total value on project were provided from the local budget. Internet Center Roma Mahala project realized in cooperation of municipality, NGO, RTV, Nishava, and Philip Morris. The municipality participated in the legalization of Roma settlements together with the Ministry of Human and Monetary Rights. For Roma settlements, Belgrad Mara Shlyaka, 20 February, means for the legalization procedure where approved. This is only municipality that participates in the project of legalization of whole Roma settlements, not individual residential facilities. After the legalization of, uh, of settlements, it will be continued with legalization of the facilities. Urban plan is being done at the moment in cooperation with, uh, with the Ministry on Environmental Protection and Special Planning, and, uh, and it was adopted in 2009. City municipality of Palilula clearly recognized the need uh, of, uh, for the development of different initiatives in the area of social inclusion of Roma people. Until now, newly formed municipal government has dealt more uh, with determining needs of Roma community and what is to come is to plan, educate, support, development and realization of certain projects in partnership with Roma NGOs and later development and comprehensive development program and anticipate in the beginning as a reply to defined priorities. At the moment, representatives of local administration do not plan preparation and adoption of strategic documents and action plan for Roma people on the territory of Palilula municipalities. According to the available data project, raising human and technical abilities of local administration to European level has been realized so far and it was financed by US through EIR and it was implemented by standing conference of town and municipalities through exchange program. Result published guides through municipal and administration of municipality of Palilula which was printed both in Serbian and Loma, Roma language. The purpose of this guide was to facilitate access to service of local self government for citizens of both nationalities. Other initiatives, they are played for the program of public works and partners with city administration, Palula, Roma Women Association, OSWIT, Gerontology Center, and National Employment Service for works in the area of social, humanitarian, and other fields, health, education, assistance to already people, children, socially vulnerable groups and individuals, protection and preserving of cultural heritage, uh, heritage and archaeologi archaeological findings, different kinds of work in theatres, museums, libraries and tourism, input the electronic data pro processing in data marketing in other. Special attention was also given to the children who live on the street by opening a so-called drop center. Also, Nish is one of the first towns in Serbia which will build recycling center providing new job position for local Loma people. In cooperation with the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities of the Council of Europe, we recognize priorities and we will work together on drama inclusion in all fields. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Davidovic. Uh, jetzt, uh, ist Herr am Bord. Herr our next speaker will be Mr. Warmersham. Uh, Mr. Warmersham was our rapporteur last year and prepared a report on the situation of Roma in Europe, a challenge for local and regional authorities. And based on this report, the Congress adopted a resolution and a recommendation last October. Uh, Mr. Warmersham was also moderator and rapporteur of the workshop on fighting prejudice and managing diversity. Uh, he comes from South in the UK, a municipality, a city that has conducted a string of successful projects in the field of Roma integration, Mr. Warmersham. Because uh, the time is running out that I have to finish and we have the monitoring brief of Germany, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, 
Colleagues, first of all, can I thank you for staying for something that you know, a subject that's close to my heart, as many of you have heard me speak on this subject before. As the President reminded us at our previous session, we adopted a co comprehensive resolution on the situation of Roma, proposing local and regional action in a number of areas to bring about improvements at the grassroots level. The Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roma Inclusion with the core group is in the process of putting together will be a practical vehicle to drive the implementation of this resolution. This will be therefore a concrete follow-up not only to the Summit of Mayors on Roma but also to our own proposals. The work in the core group also represents an excellent example of a transversal cooperation as we are working together with the special representative of the Secretary General for Roma Issues. With representatives of cities and regions themselves, with experts on the subject, as well as with institutional partners. In particular, the Assembly of European Regions, Open Society Foundations, as we've just heard from Mr. Kenneth Davey, and the European Commission, with which we have had discussions during the first meeting of the group. The modalities for the participation of Roma organisations and other civil society partners are also being discussed. Since its inception following the Summit of Mayors, the core group held two meetings on the 9th of December and on the 23rd of, 22nd of February and marked considerable progress in defining the concept and mandate of the future alliance, its structures and the scope of membership as well as the range and type of activities that it will carry out. The Alliance will be a flexible framework for exchanges of experience and provision of specific services, a kind of umbrella framework serving as a platform not only for individual cities and regions but also for existing networks and initiatives in the field of Roma inclusion. It will be based on a peer-to-peer -peer approach focusing on responses to specific needs of each community in a manner which could be described as an a la carte menu rather than a one-fits-all. We have just sent out a questionnaire to cities and regions to assess their concrete needs and priorities and to establish their preferences in the type of activities the Alliance could carry out. It is already clear that these activities will be both thematic focusing on specific areas and transversal mainstreaming specific issues in those areas. The main objectives of the Alliance will be to improve local and regional capacity for project implementation and to help secure the funding for these projects, in particular from EU and international donors. We have already received a strong expression of support for the Alliance project from several Council of Europe member states, the European Commission, which received during the last months the National Strategies for Roma Inclusion of its member states, has also expressed interest. The Alliance is particularly timely as the new programme period for the European Social Fund will start next year with a particular emphasis on the involvement of local and regional authorities in Roma inclusion. Another important boost to this project is the Committee of Ministers' reply to our October recommendation on the situation of Roma that was adopted exactly a week ago on the 14th of March. This is a very positive reply in which the Committee of Ministers welcomes our proposals to launch the Alliance and also notes with interest our proposal to national governments to set up a European programme for capacity building at a local and regional level to complement the Roma Mediators training programme known as ROMED. In its reply, the Committee of Ministers agrees that local and regional authorities have important roles to play in supporting Roma inclusion and that they should be given the capacity to effectively implement policies at their level. 
The committee has therefore invited Member States to give due consideration to the various suggestions made at the Congress. Dear colleagues, this shows that our initiative to establish the Alliance is timely indeed. It is timely because the situation of the Roma, the last single marginalised group in Europe, remains an affront to our democratic ideals and values. It is timely because national strategies for Roma inclusion requested by the European Union will have to be implemented in our local and regional communities. Finally, it is timely because there is an awakening at European national level and grassroots levels that something has to be done to improve the situation. The numerous activities are already underway. We have just heard testimonies from the City of Nice and the Open Society Foundations about the action taken at grassroots. I can add to these experiences from my hometown in Salford where we've just set up a, a young person's Roma football team and they've actually formed themselves and they're that good that they've actually gone into a football league. We're hoping to find the next Lionel Messi who will then sign for my club Manchester United and will save us millions of pounds and will help us win the Champions League. We also, which is, is a really positive thing, is we have an awards ceremony for young Roma people that have achieved in education. This is held at the university and it doesn't matter what they've achieved, but if they've been to school and received education, they get a certificate presented to them either by the mayor or a celebrity. And to see those young children, the Roma children, actually getting that certificate and feeling that they've achieved is fantastic. Uh, it's something that I would encourage other municipalities to do. Dear colleagues, I would like to conclude by encouraging those municipalities and regions represented in the Congress that are dealing with the Roma situation to come forward and express your interest in participating in the Alliance, whose launch is being planned for September this year. Together, we can move this project forward and make it the success that it deserves to be. So I would make a plea that you do come forward and join this alliance. Uh, and once again, you know how passionate I am about this and the Roma situation. You know, it's not going away. We as the Congress still need to do things at the grassroots level to make sure of Roma inclusion. I thank you for staying and listening to me and thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Warmisham. Thank you very much for your report and for your work for Roma integration. You've made something of a name for yourself, and I think the city of Salford stands out as an example. I give the floor to Mr. Mancha, but I would appeal to you to keep to a three-minute speaking time. Mr. Varencha, you have the floor. Thank you very much, President. I think the reports that we have just heard from our colleagues I think does uh, situate for us all the, uh, the issue of Roma inclusion. I think it highlights the urgency of the situation also. It's something that has to do with the lives of uh, our citizens uh, and our institutions. I think we've heard much about what the Council of Europe is doing. I think important programs are up and running when it comes to Roma inclusion. And I think it's important that we reach out to the Roma population uh, using culture also. I think we can give our support to them through culture, uh, even in times of economic hardship. And what I would like to say, given the experience uh, that I have heard about the, uh, the, the summit of 
mayors and also the seminar organized by the Council of Europe in uh, Italy on the subject. So drawing on my experience from those events, I would like to say that I think it's important that we uh, take into account the realities on the ground facing local authorities. And when courses are uh, organized locally, I think it's important that we involve private associations, private bodies. I think the measures that are being adopted and that are being advocated by the Council of Europe need to ensure that the local authorities can engage with them because, of course, they are the sort of prime protagonists when it comes to uh, local authorities at the local level. So I think we've got to engage local authorities. And I would just like to pay tribute to the work that's been done in this field by the Congress. But I do think we need a greater cooperation between the, the Council, the Congress, and the local authorities. As I say, we've got to engage local authorities to a greater extent. I think we are, we're on the right path. We're moving in the right direction. But I would just like to underscore the importance, once again, of uh, tying in the social fabric, including the social fabric of the Roma communities in our efforts. Thank you very much, Mr. Verencia. Mr. Tamilos Michel from Greece. Kere Prodeur, thank you very much. I would like to thank the President for the investment that he has and the work that he has done for the issue of Roma. I would like to congratulate the um, speakers. Around nine years ago, I was the president of the um, Alliance for Cities for the Roma Integration. This is a network which groups together around 60 municipalities, around, representing around 120,000 Roma. Um, this was created in 1995. When you have networks of towns and cities, so links between the towns, I think we can see a reaction on the part of citizens when it comes to Roma integration. It makes it possible to better implement policy to promote the integration of Roma. So I don't think we have to be to deal with um, towns and cities who want to integrate Roma. We've got to look to those in towns and cities who resist um, policies to integrate Roma, where you find racist sentiment and um, intolerance. So what are we trying to do um, as part of the um, Alliance, Alliance for the Integration of Roma, which is an important institution? We ask member states and um, local authorities associations to work to establish national um, networks of towns and cities, particularly municipalities where Roma live. With an aim not just of, not of target, not just of targeting those who want to be part of this network, and President, I consider that the, the alliance which I'm referring to provides uh, or is a sort of observatory um, looking at the situation of Roma, and it would be worthwhile evaluating the effectiveness of actions, so not just every two or three years, but to really look to how um, we can evaluate how um, Roma, how effective Roma projects are and to class the different projects. Uh, 
And in doing so, we can see um, where there are certain um, pockets where there are problems where you've got authorities rejecting policies. I think this would be a sensible approach when it comes to Roma inclusion. And President, allow me to also say that the Council of Europe and the Commissioner are doing excellent work in this sphere. But this is a very complex topic. And when you're talking about Roma policy, you need to have a better structure in place so that you don't lose anything. As the, pro po as the, previous, speaker think, uh, the previous speaker said, it's important that we implement the policies effectively. Thank you very much. I'd like to give the floor to Mrs. Amy Koppman from the Dutch delegation. In uh, the Netherlands, there are about 30 municipalities with Roma communities. Problems are mainly situated in the field of education, social work, yacht and healthcare. The particular problems are the high rate of unemployment and thus the depending on social security, but also things like criminality, prostitution, um, discrimination and hatred. Besides, there is a high rate of school absence, particularly from the age above 12. Municipalities are the first uh, respond, uh, responsible layer of government in tackling the problems. The Dutch national government also acknowledges the urgence to face these challenges. The Association of Dutch Municipalities, the VNG, created the Platform for Roma Municipalities in 2009. And currently 12 municipalities participate in the platform, gathering both local elected officials and professionals. And the platform supports municipalities in the exchange of knowledge and coordination. Moreover, the platform serves as a joint voice towards the central government. The municipalities of the platform have made available extra funds to prevent dropout school at a very early age. Avoiding early dropout of school is the methodology of the Roma platform to finding answers to related challenges such as education, work and income, living conditions and criminality. Besides the program to stop child abuse with the Roma com within the Roma communities is being implemented by four municipalities in a very successful way. Recently, a group of the Ad Hoc commun uh, Committee of Roma experts visited these municipalities and a report of the findings of the CARUM delegation will be available in next May. The particular strength of the Roma municipalities platform is that it's looking for sustainable, practical solutions. Its strength is it really, uh, that it really defines the issues and challenges, which also makes it possible to put the challenges on a national political agenda to assure that a real action plan can be developed towards improving the living conditions. As agreed by the EU member states, a national Roma strategy has been set up by the national government and the Roma, this Roma strategy will be debated tomorrow in the Dutch Parliament. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to thank uh, all uh, the speakers uh, in this debate. I'd also like to thank our rapporteurs. Your report uh, is not just a good one, but, but it's all more impressive that you've being very strongly committed to this. I'd like to thank you all very much indeed for this. If I can make an, my own uh, observation with regard to this, the impression I often have is that the national governments often uh, show a great deal of understanding from a verbal point of view with regard to the Roma issue, but when it comes to responsibilities and roles delegated to uh, towns and cities, well then very little seems to happen. What we need to do is to call on national governments to ensure that there is proper financial resources placed at the disposal of the municipalities and local and regional authorities by drawing on best practices and models to ensure that the Roma can be properly integrated. These 
This population in several towns and cities of Europe have already done a great deal in the past and history, and I think it's high time for there to be proper uh, solidarity shown. What's been uh, happening with regard to the European uh, funds is certainly very good in terms of providing aid and help to them, but what we also need to do is to be aware of the fact that this really is uh, necessary. The massive aid is needed for the regions to ensure such integration does take place and this should really be a duty, I would say, on behalf of the uh, municipalities and this is what I wanted to say by way of my own observation on this debate. I'd like to thank very much indeed the speakers and the rapporteurs once again.